What's up, Rage Nation? How's it going? This is Alex. You watching the Rage Nation show? This is just Webster's where we talk about all things that matter to me in the world of movies. As always, a lot of productions going on, so we got a lot to talk about. I got a lot of news to cover in this episode, so I'm gonna make this quick as possible. So first, let's talk about Star Wars, and the script is done for Star Wars Episode Seven. They turned it in, and now it's time to start casting. All right. Another thing you gotta know about Star Wars Episode Seven is that they're not shooting the film in IMAX. J.J. Abrams, who had a great experience with uh, working in Star Trek Into Darkness in IMAX 3D, is no longer shooting Star Wars Episode 7 in IMAX and not in 3D either. Uh, he won't be shooting it in 3D. He will not be shooting it in IMAX. Instead, he will be doing a DMR process to remaster the movie uh, for an IMAX presentation. Also, it's most likely it will get a 3D post conversion, so not to be shot in 3D, all right? And I think that with J.J. Abrams as the director, I think that he has the right mindset and vision to make it have great looking 3D, just like he did with Star Trek Into Darkness. So that's what's happening with Star Wars Episode Seven. Moving on, let's talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or rather TMNT, and Brad Fuller, the producer for TMNT confirmed officially that the turtles are not going to be aliens. They're going to be turtles and the origins of the alien ooze that turns them into the TMNT is of alien origins. All right. Remember Michael Bay said that the turtles are going to be aliens. He was so firm on that. But you know, you know what happened afterwards. There was a full-on nerd rage. I wasn't very happy about it. I'm thinking, why change it? Because it really adds nothing to it. Whether you change it or not, it, it, it's not necessary, right? Because th there's no reason for it. It doesn't add anything. There's no contribution for the for for having them be aliens. So just keep them as turtles. And it looks like they did some damage control. The nerds are happy. They want to keep them happy. So let's keep them as turtles. All right. So they're no longer aliens. Um, uh, but let's check out this costume of Michelangelo. Now, this costume is a wearable costume for 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 consumers. All right, it's not the actual costume that the the actors are wearing. This is something for consumers to buy. And check out this Michelangelo costume. It looks a little weird. Now, people are nerd raging again. People are saying, "Oh my God, Michael Bay, you're destroying my childhood once again," just like he did with Transformers. But you know what? I actually don't look at it this way. What I see is something that's very different. First of all, I notice there's personality in this costume. Michelangelo is wearing a necklace, he's got sunglasses hanging off his thing, and to top things off, there's extra detail. You check out his arms, you see the scales there. That's something that I like to see. I like to see uh, definition, and I also like to see details on the, the, the skin tones. So that's really neat. And second, look at his costume. He's wearing, he's got a little bit of wardrobe on. It looks like he's wearing uh, ripped jeans or something like that with some some taping on it you know this these kind of little things are changes but it provides a little bit of personality to the characters themselves so right now I'm just waiting for the trailer I hope we get one soon because we've received no marketing material about this movie it's kept on the hush hush the movie's done um, filming during post-production right now so all we're waiting is for some marketing material so but so far I'm pretty neutral about it I'm just not really excited about the fact that Jonathan Liebesman is directing. I really don't like him as a director, but let's hope that he changes his ways of being a crappy director <laughs> or crappy storyteller, rather. All right, moving on, let's talk about Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino was in the news recently because he announced that his next movie will be a Western called The Hateful Eight. No other details were provided except for what I think is that um, it's going to be a revenge movie. Now, a few days later, looks like Tarantino won't be making that as his next film because... He's shelving the project. He's shelving the project because of an act of betrayal. What had happened is that he passed the, the script to six people. That would be three actors, two other people, and a producer. And each one of them has an agent. And it looks like the agent of one of these people leaked out the script. This is an act of betrayal. You can't trust anybody around here. And um, it's, it's out there. And because of that... Tarantino is no longer making this movie. When we watch Tarantino movies, we want, we have no expectations. We don't know what to expect except to have some great storytelling and great characters. And I think that that's all you can really expect. That's all you should really expect in a Tarantino movie. Now, keep in mind that 
Tarantino movies are not like Star Wars or not like Transformers. Why do people feel the need to leak the script out in the public? Like, what is there to gain from that? You know, this is not Transformers. This is not Star Wars. Um, this is not something with a huge, huge fan following like Star Wars and Transformers. So why do people need to do something so stupid and leak scripts? All I know is that I'm really disappointed by it. Tarantino is pissed off because he wants to make this as his next movie, but he's no longer doing that. He's shelving the project, and at the very most part, he could publish it as a novel. But um, he's not worried that much because um, one of, I mean, he's got like at least 10 different um, story ideas or scripts that he's been working on from time to time, but um, he could turn any one of those into films. So there you have it. That's all we got to talk about with regards to Tarantino news. Now let's talk about Batman versus Superman, also known as Man of Steel 2. A lot of news has been happening with regards to Batman versus Superman. And first, the, 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 the last news report I uh, mentioned was the fact that it had to be delayed. It's no longer coming out in summer of 2015 instead is coming out in summer of 2016 that's two and a half years from now and which is really quite disappointing because 2015 imagine that star wars uh, uh hunger games uh, uh, uh um avengers 2 <laughs> you know uh, uh just a lot of a lot of great movies or a lot of like big movies rather all coming out in the same year but Batman vs Superman is no longer happening and I'm positive that it's because Warner Brothers got scared. Warner Brothers got scared because of all the competition they decided that they're going to move it. But be, but uh, their 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 um their uh, uh, um reasoning for delaying it is because they want the, the the vision to be realized fully. Okay, well let let's let's step aside from that and let's talk about some of the news that I got to talk about, all right? So, we got to talk about the fact that Walking Phoenix is still the front runner for playing Lex Luthor. And I'm pretty happy about that. Like Lex Luthor, I mean, Joaquin Phoenix hasn't officially been cast, but so far he is still the front runner. And if he's cast, I'm happy because he does a very good job at playing a villain. We've seen Kevin Spacey play play uh, uh, Lex Luthor. We've seen Gene Hackman and also the guy in Smallville. And I think it's time for a new vision, a new look, and I think Joaquin Phoenix can do a good job. Look at Gladiator. H him playing, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 I forgot the character's name, but he won or was at least nominated for an Academy Award for that portrayal. So very, very good job with Joaquin Phoenix playing villains. Uh, next, we got to talk about Henry Cavill and the fact that he's going to be sporting the trademark S hairstyle that is really happening. And I'm glad about that because when I see these little homages, I feel very happy. I feel that, that the filmmakers are really acknowledging the source material, which they should because without the source material, there wouldn't be the film. So there you have it. Now, now let's talk about some of the reasons for the delay happening. A lot of people were speculating it was the fact it was because that Ben Affleck had an injury. It's not because of that at all. Um, what had happened is that like they're they're trying to get the story right. They want to put together a great script, and one of the the story aspect has to do with Wonder Woman's origins. Keep in mind, this is a essentially a Man of Steel movie, but they're putting Batman in it. They're also putting Wonder Woman in it, but both Batman and Wonder Woman are supporting roles. So the 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 big question on the script writers, the writers' uh, uh, um, um, uh, dilemmas right now is: should they or shouldn't they include Wonder Woman's origins? Wonder Woman's origins are from the mythical or fantastical world of. Themyscira. Themyscira, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it's also known as the Paradise Island. Now, they're trying to find out, is it a good idea to add the Paradise Island in it or just leave it out and not explain Wonder Woman's origins in that much detail where they have to go there and create CG for this mythical uh, 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 location? That's the big dilemma. Now, if Wonder Woman's going to be added into it, it's it would be good to add a slight origins you know retelling you know telling of, of her origins but this is still a man of steel movie and um keep in mind the focus is the man of steel superman himself so to talk about wonder woman's origins maybe they should leave that out in another movie all right so 
that that's um that's that's the big dilemma right now. Now, one thing that uh, Warner Brothers won't do is that they will not copy the way Marvel Studios does the post credit scene. You know how the in every Marvel movie there's always a post credit scene where it ties in uh not necessarily the 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 movie that that it's attached to story but it attaches another story with another story from Marvel, all right? So the end credits of, of, of uh, let's say, um, Thor 2 connects Guardians of the Galaxy with Avengers 2, all right? It doesn't necessarily connect Thor with Avengers. So it, 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 the, uh, blah, 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 blah. Warner Brothers is not planning to go with that type of, of, um, like, of storytelling. What they intend to do is that after every single Justice League character film, they're planning to have a cliffhanger that ties directly with the next film. So it's an ongoing, long film, uh, which eventually leads up to Justice League, which eventually leads up to Wonder Woman, which eventually leads up to another Batman movie, and Flash, and Green Lantern, and whatnot. So it, they're going to do it like that, all right? Which I don't have a problem with, all right? I'm glad that they're just, Warner Brothers is deciding to do things a little differently instead of copy what uh, Marvel Studios is doing. So... I think that's cool. I, I, I like that idea, but it might piss off some fans who would like to have their movies to be concluded definitively. All right. But you know what? I'm open minded. I'm down for it for knowing what's next or at least knowing that something's going to happen next. All right. So there you have it. Speaking of the next film, it turns out that Justice League will be the next film to come out right after Batman vs. Superman. As you already know, Batman vs. Superman comes out in summer 2016. But it looks like Warner Brothers has confirmed that Justice League will be coming out in summer of 2017. Now, that just means that Zack Snyder won't be the director for Justice League. And it's mainly because, like, there's not enough time. <laughs> there's just not enough time to work on two films. So you got to get another director to direct the Justice League movie. Now, nobody knows who the director is going to be. But, of course, that's all up in the air with regards to Warner Brothers and all their meetings and discussions and talking about what talent they're going to use for the Justice League movie. And speaking of their next film, it also mentions that... Um, the uh, uh, that It's also been mentioned that uh, Wonder Woman... And Wonder Woman could possibly be shooting back to back with Batman versus Superman so that they can have Gal Gadot in, you know, uh, all ready for the role, excuse me, of Wonder Woman immediately right after filming Batman versus Superman. So, either way, all we know is that in the next two or three years, we are going to be getting Batman versus Superman. We're going to be getting Justice League and we're going to be getting Wonder Woman because Gal Gadot has been signed on for a three-picture deal. All right? And I've already mentioned which three movies they are. Batman vs. Superman, Justice League, and Wonder Woman as a standalone film. So there you have it. That's all I got to say in this video. A lot of news has been happening with the biggest DC slash Warner Brothers film in movie history. That would be Batman vs. Superman. But it is coming in summer 2016. And But aside from that, we got Justice League and Wonder Woman. And also, I forgot to mention, Fantastic Four will start casting at the end of this month <laughs> because Simon Kinberg, the writer, has turned in the final script. So there you have it. That's all I got to say in this movie, or, or rather video, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit this like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, at Raging Nation. My name is Alex Yu. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Bookshelf over here, because I think it'd be more appropriate for my... Um my 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 blu-rays okay now let's take a peek over here and look at my game